Hi everyone, Susie here from Minnesota and I garden in a zone 4B and it's the middle of April and I thought I'd take you on another annual seedling tour. A lot has changed. Um, this is just annuals. I have my perennial seedlings that are already hardened off. We had an amazing week for it. Uh, we went from 30s to 80s, it's crazy, which also flooded my backyard and it's been underwater for, let's say about five days now. And then we got a lot of rain last night and now, I mean, all the snow was gone and now we've got snow. It's just trying to stay positive. It's getting really difficult because winter has been horrible. Probably one of the worst winters ever. And then, I mean, lots of snow, lots and lots. I have so many broken shrubs. It's just heartbreaking to me. But, um, but yeah, having just that taste of summer, not even spring, summer and then all of a sudden get slapped in the face with winter again. So it's just, that's why I needed to do a tour. It makes me happy. This looks unbelievable. I wish I could show you my perennial seedlings because the fact that I had them hardened off before April 15th is amazing. But now it's a little bit of a setback just due to they're in my workout area with no grow lights. So I will have to figure that out, but I will worry about that when I have to worry about it. A little bit at a time, really, really trying to stay positive, but whew. Mother Nature has a way of just, we'll leave it at that. And then this basket here has Tradescantia cuttings. I do this for my aunt. It is going towards the light up here. And eventually that foliage will fall. It's very full and lush inside. So it's just doing really good. I just, I probably should, I, I forgot to water it. So I just had to be a little bit better this one's done blooming. Unfortunately, I can't have lights on this right now because this plant stand, the light is kaput. And I'm not replacing it because this stand I'm probably just gonna get rid of and then figure out a different grow light situation over here. So for the time being, I'm making this work just with clip lights, with some plant lights, they're they're okay. But they're they're just working in a pinch. And then this is my sister's grow light. So with the a little bit of purple right there. These are all coleus cuttings and I spaced these pretty far apart. So I'm, I'm using plastic humidity domes. I ran out of trays without holes, but they were looking just a little um, squished, especially that one. So this way I'm just hoping that by increasing the airflow and making more room for them, they'll just bush out a little bit more because, and they're doing pretty good. This looks really nice. The color is a little muted. When they get more light, they will color up a lot better. But for the time being, they're, this is working. And then when I do cuttings or seeds, I always start with a potting mix without fertilizer. But when I pot everything up, this year I went with a slow release fertilizer Osmocote. And the results have been amazing. I'm not sponsored. And this has just taken the the stress of fertilizing and keeping up with it. And the plants have, look amazing. I don't have any yellowing. It's just, I will always do this. But um, this bag, I had gotten this for Christmas. I asked for this for Christmas and I still have a good amount in there. So I'll be using that for my outdoor pots. I will need more for that though. And then in here, I just have some day, oops, dahlias. Started early. It's taken them at least, well, since my last tour, at least two weeks to show that. And then this is see, totally tangerine. So it looks pretty good. So I don't have too many trays of plants down here. The airflow is just not optimal. So if I need that down there, I will put more down here, but I'm fine for the time being. But it's just, it was starting to mold. And like I said, airflow is the best thing you can do for your plants. And then I do have these because I just have them numbered. So I didn't have to write this on all the containers. But over here, these are struggling just a little bit. And these are trailing petunias. So I only put them in the small containers just because I, I've i lost two already. They're just a little bit more delicate. But this is Shockwave Purple Tie-Dye Petunia. That one looks really cool. So I'm hoping that I get, I would be happy if one just makes it. These two look pretty good. 
This is a tomato seedling, really teeny tiny. This is orange accordion. And so was that one back there with some marigolds behind it. Those were the only two that I got to germinate with my first sowing. So I did do another sowing and I'll show you better luck. This right here is Purple Prince Alternanthera and I love it, grew it last year and it's a beautiful foliage plant for full sun. It gets about 12, I would say 12 to 18 inches tall and it just fills out a container. I think if you put three in a 12 inch pot, it's just gorgeous, but um, yeah, love it. I think I have nine, so. And then another little daylily from my seeds. This one's been struggling a bit. The fungus gnats had fun with this and finally they left it alone. But this was also sharing a spot with the white swan echinacea and I got rid of that one because it just succumbed to fungus gnats. That was a magnet, so. And then this one leaning here is a Texas star hibiscus. And I put it here because the other ones are just eating it up. They're huge and that one was tiny, so. I'm hoping he kinda rebounds. I had to put this here and then of course it's browning because it's not under its own light but that's okay i think my sister's gonna take that one it's just a ponytail palm and then tretiscantia cuttings uh, a summer mm, could be better i'm not focusing too much <laughs> on this tray there are other ones that i'm just there's other plants that i'm looking more forward to with having more sun this year i have so many more options so I just have this one LED shop light. This is 5,000 Kelvins. I wish I could do two, but one, I'm like, at this point, I'm really trying to stay within budget this year. And yeah, let me just show you, like, outside. Oh, can you see that junk? Can you see the water back there? Yep. I don't know. Yeah, wah, wah. <laughs> oh. I do have a pump, but it could not keep up. So it's just eh, more of this crap is on the way and I'm just biding my time, fingers crossed that plants rebound from this. But the coleus here could definitely benefit from a gallon container. But I mean, look at all that growth down there. This would be sufficient for a 12 inch container on its own. Like it's just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, these leaves are massive. It's Part of the Kong series. Oh, sometimes I'm like, who's that? Is there a spider? I'm like, I have a healthy respect for spiders. I'm really hoping that they take care of these flies that they get caught in the webs, but I just really don't want them on me. And then this one's really neat. Um, been pinching my coleus just to promote bushiness because I just don't like the legginess. But you can see there are lots of growth down here. And again, once they can get outside and into a big container like i said i mean this size here would just be fine for one pot there's no need to cram your plants i mean look at that and um so most of my annuals again i think that's and there's do you see the big fly flying past it just keeps going from my head but i would say 80 percent of the annuals i'm growing for family and friends i'm just trying to um make some money back from um <laughs> my trees coming down that was a huge expense so and they're they're fine getting plants for me i just hope they like my selections that being said i am keeping probably pretty much all the pelargoniums for myself i might be a little selfish that way they are struggling just a little bit um there is some yellowing here here i was cleaning them up a bit so i'm just kind of biding my time they still look really good it's a beautiful plant and they were occupying two trays and I spaced them out. So I think I have four per tray here, just staggered, kind of like in a little, and um, oh, I'll probably move that one back a little bit. And I took off all of the blooms. I just, oh, my heart sunk when I did that, but I just want them to focus on the foliage, the roots at this point and not flowering. I do have some spikes on there, which I'm debating if I want to um, take off. I'm really hoping that within a week I can start harding off some of the annuals here just starting because once they it, they're it's just they're amazing when they're hardened off you can see the difference and then down here I wish I could pot up these grasses but I don't have any containers right now and I ran out of potting mix and I'm just running out of room and they're doing pretty good 
This is Savannah Ruby Grass. I have to find one in here that's doing. I mean, they're all doing really good. So. But these, so the, these grasses here, along with the Tradescanti cuttings, do not have a slow release fertilizer in there because those are the containers that I started this, these seeds in and then also the Tradescantia cuttings over here. So I don't ever use a fertilizer. So these are the ones that I just have to remember to fertilize. I try at least on every other week because I find that the fertilizer has to flush through. Otherwise, if it's every week, it's pretty much how often I water is once a week. And the fertilizer, no, it was just too much. So it's gotta be every other week, but I, they look pretty good. And then I have, I always forget it. Chinese fountain grass, there we go. And that's this one with a bit bigger blades back there, but I don't know, I'll have to think about it. I just, I'm really trying to save on room too and trying to give plants optimal space. Like these are the Texas Star Hibiscus. I have one moon moth at, that's gonna be white blooms that germinated. The other one is just the Texas Star and that's a kind of a coral color. Would you pinch it? I've never grown these before and this is my stash. <laughs> But I mean, they're getting so tall and I think if I would pinch it, it would promote bushiness. The only reason why I hesitate is because I was growing a hardy hibiscus from seed that I collected from my plants and I pinched them and they're dead. And I'm like, and I know they weren't liking growing under grow lights to tell the truth that long. So there was that, but they're, they're not here. But yeah, I just, I would really like to see if these would bush out because they get pretty tall. Let me know what you would do, because I'm still thinking maybe I should just experiment on one. I'm like, I could sacrifice one. I only have, I don't know. Maybe I'll do it on the little one. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see. So then this is Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus, and I've grown this from seed two years ago, and one plant gets the size of a, well, huge shrub. It's just amazing. It looks kind of to me like a Japanese maple. But I mean, when you think this little plant gets about five feet tall and four feet in diameter, they're huge. But I did pinch. So this I know is fine because I had to pinch it two years ago just to maintain its height. It's aggressive. And then um, more Trascantia, but this one's really cool super cool it just you can see it's got a little bit better growth and just really nice so i did space them out too to give them a little bit more room i had some white and green trascantia and they were just looking tough should i i think i'm going to start at the bottom here so then down oops sorry. down here i have hummingbird coral nymph salvia can you see the fungus gnats oh they made an appearance how nice of them yeah, the struggle has been real with them, but like I said, the only one I lost was the echinacea, the white swan, but they look amazing. I'm just, and I love this one. I always have it grow it in my garden, but I'm just wondering if I should pinch it. I'm just, I don't know. And then back here, this is just a combo tray. That's my tray back there of coral nymph and forest fire salvia. And they get taller, like three feet. So the forest fire looks really cool and then I mean that is an aggressive grower still thinking about pinching it just to have it branch out but more coleus cuttings I gave this a little bit more room I can add more to it later on if I have to these are xeranthemums I just potted up it's kind of like a straw flower or looks like it this is calamintha marvelet blue looking pretty good I have some one struggling in there that's okay I just I potted them all up and some were really dinky I have a hard time getting rid of plants and then in the back with the big foliage, it kind of looks like hollyhock, is lavatera. I didn't have great germination with that, so I'm just happy with what I did get. And then I'm growing vines here. And I, when did I, a week ago? Not even. I was putting off growing the vines early just because I run out of room with these because they just, and they're in these little peat pellets. Um, they, they are definitely ready to pot up because I always wait for the true leaf and um, aren't these cotyledons just amazing 
but I know once I pot them up, they are going to grow oh, super fast. And like I said, when it was 85 degrees outside, my plant room was 85. I can't control the, the coolness. I can control the heat. It's set at 63 right now, but even whenever it's 32 degrees outside, my plant room right now is 75 degrees. And that's just the lights are not hot to the touch, but they still put off some warmth and so do the plants and my dehumidifier. So, and then even at night, it does not drop to 63. I'm lucky if it gets below 70. So that's why everything is just growing a little bit too fast. I'm keeping, I think four of the hyacinth bean vine, Ruby Moon. I mean, look at the size of these. And then the true leaf or the vine starting. So they're ready to pot up. These, I don't suggest you doing that, but these are some sturdy. Look at that. And then over here, Spanish flag vine. And I'm not keeping any of these. The hummingbirds absolutely love this vine. I mean, you, you want hummingbirds? Grow this vine. And they're, they look like, I don't know if you want to say candy corn they're tubes but the coloring kind of a orange yellow red they're really neat but I put two in each one because I didn't soak the seeds I felt bad when I read the seed pack I'm like eh. okay I'm just gonna put they all germinated every one within like three days crazy this is this is part of the morning glory family so and then did I say the moonflower here I'm not I don't they're gorgeous, but they bloom so late that they almost come to a freeze before I can see the blooms. But for some reason, my aunt loves them. She can get them to bloom quicker than I can. Oh, Oh no, it's okay. I thought I squished the Travis Gant, yeah. Oh, I'm done with that. So yeah, so right now I'm just kind of holding off. They do need a watering. I just, that's the one thing I have to keep up with because they're beasts. But that's okay. Let me just move the stool I was sitting on. That was convenient. Sorry about that. Um, so four trays of miracles. I just potted these up on Wednesday and it was 85 in my plant room and I had the fan plant pointed up. I'm not used to it. I still have my winter skin on. So it was just love the heat, but mm, just warmer than what I'm used to. But yeah, so I have uh, Mr. Majestic double orange flame, Colossus red gold by color, and then fireball. Aren't they amazing? The flies like the foliage. They keep landing on here. So I would, thought it was more of a deterrent for bugs, but um, I just, so what I do when my trays are like this, because the shelf is not 24 inches. So I just kind of go back and forth. Like I'll do that. And then this can get the direct light and then I'll do that. And then the back ones can, but I do have my lights up higher. So the light can kind of, cast over if you know what I'm saying but yeah if I see that they're leaning or the other thing I do if they're leaning I'll just take this one and I'll turn around and then I can start stretching the other way and then every now and then I'll rub my hands over it although some people don't like the scent I don't mind it so just what I do yeah but aren't they amazing I have almost 100% germination on the marigolds and then oh I suppose I need my stool back I just use blue painter's tape just so, cause like I said, a lot of this is going to family and friends and a lot of it resembles one another. So this is the forest fire. This is where I'm like, you can see the roots already. And I'm like I said, I like to pinch it. I think it'd create a stronger plant and more branching, which is, it is starting to do, but I might give it another week. So this is where I have my, I have three fans going at all times and on the high setting. And some of you might think that that's too much and it's not. It just helps with the whole hardening off when they get out in that wind, they've got strong stems. So you can run your hands over it too, but I just don't have the time to do that with every plant. I do it with some, but uh, Agus Dash, I have three trays of it. So this is a combo of Golden Jubilee and Lavender Hyssop, which is a perennial for me. And that's a lavender hiss up and back. And then, isn't the gold? This was suffering a little bit, but I think it's bounced back. My grow lights are on for about 16 to 18 hours. So maybe it was too much, but look at the patchy sunset. That's all mine. I'm like, 
Look at the branching on that down there. Isn't that amazing? So this is where this is leaning a little bit. So this is where I, and I bottom water all of this. So you can see the top is pretty dry, which is really helping with the fungus gnats and it's drawing the roots down. So then I can start leaning that way, strengthening the stem too. And then this is Agastache Giant Hyssop. And I have plans for this and this is budding up. Can you see that? And the foliage to me smells like black licorice. It's a, an anise. So some is a little bit stronger than others, but that is just, I think it's kind of cool. I don't like black licorice, but the scent of the leaves is very herbal smelling. And then more coleus cuttings. Again, I have them spaced out just so they can bush out instead of grow up. Then I do have a tray of pelargonium cuttings in the way back sharing this. It's hard to see, but this is just two I started from seed, the apple blossom. Only ones I got to germinate, but this is about the size you want for when you go to pot up outside and harden off. The other ones are beasts, but you can see there's a bud right there. Look at that one. That was perfect. But I, ha I had cut all of these off. So, yeah, so I just have two of those. Um, this one, I don't think it's budding up yet. Should be soon. And I'm not turning the purple lights off. They're annoying. I have LED shop lights, 5,000 Kelvins or 5,500, and these are plant lights. Um, I won't go with these again. They're just, they were $45 a piece, and the purple is annoying, and I don't see any difference between these or the LED shop lights, except for the color is horrible and the price. So, second batch of tomatoes. So I have them all sectioned off here. I think they're going to be ready to pot up within about a week. So I'm just, again, kind of rub my hands over. But Ananas, Ananas Noir, it's called Black Pineapple. I had no germination the first time. So this is really cool. Now, isn't it weird? This is orange accordion here. I have very little germination on this one. And then Sartre Rolois. That looked really neat. All these seeds I got from Baker Creek. This is, I can't wait. That's All of them are really visually appealing. And then a Rosella. And then I also looked at the reviews too. So I always check those out. And this is a cherry tomato here. So I can't wait. So then all of these containers here contain petunias. Um, so I just nicknamed this oddballs just because I have the tomatoes in here. I have different types of petunias. Uh, so number seven here, this is Easy Wave Pink Passion Petunia. Not doing too bad since I potted them uh, up. It was Wednesday when I potted them up. I would say, well, these have probably tripled in size and these are doing really good. So, sorry about the purple light. And in here, the Tidal Wave series, I would, if I had to recommend any, I would recommend the Tidal Wave. They're beasts, amazing. And this is the silver petunia. So, uh, whoa, I'm like, <laughs> but then again, my plant room is pretty warm. Like in a perfect world, I would like it to stay at about 63 degrees to slow things down and just concentrate on good roots. But, it is what it is. At least I can control the heat. Otherwise, all of this would be frozen. Probably not frozen. It, if my garage wasn't heated, it probably stays about 40, 42. This one is Easy Wave Plum Pudding Mix. Like I said, yeah, just a little dew right here. And then, so the Easy Wave is okay. It's just and Shock Wave Pink Vein. That one's pretty good. I do have a dehumidifier going at all times, 24 seven. It's just, it's so humid in here. So I'm with three fans. And then I planted up yeah, more of those Aranthemums. Again, they're like a straw flower, they look really good. I had started all these from seed in styrofoam egg curtains. And so it acted as a plug and it was perfect. The easiest potting up ever. And then Summer Jewel Lavender Selvia. They all have buds on, and this is also, I'm debating if I should pinch them and uh, just start bushing out. But I do wanna see the bloom color. 
kind of nice to let people know what they're, you know, take pictures and let them know what they're getting. And hopefully they like what they're getting. And then this is red salvia. My aunt does like the red salvia. So again, just a gorgeous plant. You can see stock here. I think these only get like a foot tall. And then the gara is mine. I potted these up and they're already starting to get flower spikes. So I probably will pinch it at some point and then let it bush out. Although it's doing a really good job more coleus that i call this renee's coleus these are cuttings that i took she loves this i know she's probably going to want about 12 of them if not more so this just the lights were a little bit taller here so and then also this is what i'm growing for her i'm giving it a break this year this is detura every part of it is poisonous and i mean it's amazing so i've got purple ballerina Finally, the cotyledon seeds. I'm going to have to wash my hands after that. I did something yesterday and I touched my lips and now <laughs> I've got a rash on my lips. So how fun is that? And then this one is oh, another purple one. You can see the leaves are a bit bigger on that one than that one. And then the little guys back here are yellow. And they just germinated a little bit later than the purple. So... It's not the container size. The size that they're in is perfect. Let me just put that over there. The biggest thing is just, again, the more airflow I can give everything. I mean, if all I can say is fungus gnats are my biggest issue, I'll take the fungus gnats. Could be a whole lot worse, but yeah. So I guess that's lots for other people and not me. Swedish Ivy I just have here for now. There's definitely enough light over here to make them happy. That's where I bought them water too. And then more coleus, which is, I have pinched a lot, like I said, to promote branching. And so this one, is that not beautiful? So this is the perfect coleus plant. This is where you want it for potting outside. This one has this one up here. So. So yeah, but look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I think that's Kong Rose. More cuttings. These might have to get space at some point so they can branch out a little bit more, but they're doing pretty good. I mean, these are just massive. Don't you like the undersides? But they're huge. So. And then I just potted these up today. They could have probably been potted up about a month ago. They're, they're past due, so I pinched. It just, so they look a little bit tough. Don't worry, they should bounce back. Coleus is pretty resilient when you pinch it. But, I mean, some of these are just amazing. Look at the color. This is Colocha Sunset. And then if you can see the color in there. Gorgeous. This is a shorter variety, so this should, you can see it's getting close to lights. Again, the lights are not hot, but I don't want them smushed against them either. But... You can see how a little bit more light they color up better. Otherwise, they look a little more purpley. All right, so I'll go down here quick. <laughs> more coleus cuttings. Or I should say Renee's coleus. All right, so these are the petunia cuttings I took probably about two months ago. I potted them up, and I have been pinching like crazy. I've never pinched plants the way I have with these because they just don't stop. And can you see where I've done all the pinching? Here, here. I mean, it's just where I felt so bad because I, so obviously it didn't mind it because it's still throwing off blooms. And I think I just pinched these a few days ago. Again, the heat is just making these and these were also pinched and look at this. Talk about and then this is tidal wave hot pink, they're all trailing. And like I said, this is the tidal wave se series, and it's amazing. But yeah, see where I don't know if you can see where I, it's crazy. And then this one's blooming too, so I just gave them a little bit more room to branch out. They just won't stop there. Like I said, I can't help it, but they're amazing. So this one right here, I swear this just grew 
right before my eyes. I'm like, look at that. I better check on the water with that now. That one is a number one. Yes, I just have them. I do have to label them at some point. Which one is this? Shock Wave Denim Petunia. I did a lot of purple because I figure um, I have 19 on there because that's how many tags I have to make. If nobody wanted petunias, I'll take the purple. I like the pink. It's okay, but it's not a go-to color. Just reminds me of kind of like Pepto-Bismol color. Uh, down here, number this is Trilogy Blue Petunia. You can see definitely a little bit more delicate of a grower. And then this one is Success Burgundy. I had an eight on here because I wanted them blooming when I was giving them away, but I decided to go with seven weeks. And I'm glad I did because like I said, these are not bad. That is a really good size that they're at. This one's okay. You can see them branching. Not well, amazing. But these, look at that. Oh. So yeah, that that's my annual seedlings. It's a lot. I did start some a little bit too early. I like the coleus. I should have waited about another month. I've just never, I've tried coleus from seed probably five years ago and I didn't have the best luck, but with doing seeds now for that long I've kind of learned some things along the way it's still a beautiful plant so it's just gonna need and this is good good in its own container I don't need to cram them together and then yeah so like I said a lot of these are going to family and friends oh and I also had the euphorbia the glamour improved again succumb to fungus gnats that is just a little bit too tender I probably should space this a little bit so yeah, so I think things are looking really good. Watering has definitely gotten better, especially with potting them up. These, these can be about three days before I have to water. And then the bigger containers like this, I would say about four days, depending. I mean, right now my plant room, with it not getting into 85, it's, it's a little bit better. So yeah, so how, hopefully you're having good luck with your seedlings. And if some of you like me, that you started them a little bit too soon and you don't know what to do with them because you are now covered in snow again. That's okay. It's still, still had lots of fun doing it. They'll be fine. But all in all, it's been going pretty good. This has felt like a full-time job though. I'm not gonna lie. I, I love it. I absolutely love it. But there are days whenever I get home from work Sometimes like, oh, I better go check on the water. And it's not something that you, can, you you have to commit to this. You can't just leave it for a day because you were tired or you have to check on them or you can come back to dead plants. So it's just morning and night I check on them and yep, they're, but it's worth it. Definitely worth it. So hopefully you enjoyed and bye for now.